Last week, I microwaved some popcorn to enjoy while watching the discussion between Kelly from the Deschutes Historical Museum and Steve Stenkamp, who is bringing new life to historical photos of Central Oregon. Go ahead and stop it and do uh, like three seconds. What you didn't see was that capturing the process on video required turning the microwave on and off at the museum several times, which didn't go entirely smoothly. <laughs> Let's look at this. Let's... <laughs> That's carbon right there, carbon-based life form. That's so burnt. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny that the Ben Fire Department may have called within seconds of this video. Whoops. So this week, I'm gonna keep it simple. Ah, much better. First up on our tour of Central Oregon history in living color, it's one of the most famous faces in Central Oregon history. The pond monkey. The pond monkey. This is actually, you see this photo around town quite a bit. Yeah, you see it in paintings downtown. And his last name is McLennan. Uh-huh. Dan McLennan. Dan. Um, he still has a lot of family in... In the area. In the area. And his job was to move logs in the pond. You had to have cork boots to walk around on the... On the logs. On the, walk around on the logs. Yeah. And uh, you talk about, I mean, there's no life jacket on. There's lots of things. Um, about that picture that I admire. He's floating. And he's floating. He's yeah. on a floating log. Yep. Yeah. And then when it, and, and I, there's certain elements of the black and white that I like, you know, because it, it, it's kind of that more industrial feel for me anyway. Yeah. That it's more, yeah. it's kind of more industrial feel and back in the day, if you will. But you colorize it and then it brings out the colors of the sawmills in the background. So um, you got Brooks Galen on the right and then way off on the left, you've got Shevlin Hickson. And it kind of makes the steam and smoke show up a little bit better. Um, yeah, the water's this, a little more reflective. Yeah, this going into color, especially with with the background of Shovel and Hickson, makes it feel much more industrial to me. Um, just that it. So this feels more industrial yes, for you. Yeah. But the black and white feels more industrial. Yeah. How can I change your mind? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just got. I don't know. And that's the neat thing about this whole process because we're. I've been criticized for colorizing them, mm -hmm. but other people really like them. It, it, I wouldn't say it's art, because history's not art, but there is some interpretation that everyone sees differently yes. based on some of these photographs. And when you're cleaning them up, we're not you're not allowing the the you know AI-ness of the software to do all of this and just trust it that um, as you're you are making color choices and and doing repairs to them for the areas that you know it's not reading correctly. <laughs> and finally, let's see, how do I describe our next picture? Pantorium. Uh, oh, the So capital. it was, the streets are paved, so it's past 1922. Mm -hmm. um, we got Bend High School in the background. Yeah, so it, that makes so it 25. So now it's 1925. Mm -hmm. But J.C. Penney building hadn't been built yet Correct. there at the corner, so we've got the time frame narrowed down pretty good. And you can see the Capitol Theater and some you know other features through town. And of course, in the background, it's pretty obvious to see the big smokestacks of both Brooks Scanlon and Shevlin Hickson. So you see it. You just you're, you. To me, when I did this one first, you saw all those different things, and then you colorized it. And I believe it was you that down here in this lower corner. <laughs> All of a sudden, well, I started reading the signs well, because you, yeah, because the, now you can yes. kind of start seeing that. And all yeah. of a sudden, it's a pantorium. It's the pantorium. So then we had to go, just... okay, what's a pantorium? Yep. Well, duh, it's a place it's where you buy pants. Buy pants. Yeah. And it was a dry cleaner, and uh, it, to yeah. me that was uh, <laughs> pantorium. Someone needs to open a pantorium and bend. They sure do. I mean, this is a great example of how putting it in color, you know flips a switch in your brain that you're seeing the the contrast of the lettering and and all of a sudden the signs are much more prominent for you and you're just reading them and then we had to figure out what a pantorium was it was a great day all right well we're halfway done with the series and <laughs> i'm fully caffeinated mm. see you next week for more central oregon history in living color Oh man, I'm so awake. I can feel my heartbeat with my eyes. For Central Oregon Daily News, I'm Scott Elness. <laughs>